This is the evening of September 29th and this morning there was a briefing from the Direct General of Military Operations about an oper a commando operation across the line of control yesterday by Indian troops which uh, targeted what are called terrorist launch pads in uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir and destroyed a number of them. Uh, Pakistan has denied this and said that there was nothing more than some cross-border firing by, uh, by small arms and that two of their personnel were uh, killed in the exchanges. Uh, but uh, obviously there has been some uh, variety of escalation in the ongoing uh, rhetoric between India and Pakistan. So to discuss this and other matters, we have with us uh, General uh, Sudhir Wombatkare. General Wombatkare, what do you gather from all that you've heard about the nature of the operations that were conducted last night by the Indian Army? I would say it was a uh, well-planned, well-conducted offensive action against uh, the terrorist launch pads in Pakistan, which is about uh, two or three kilometers uh, on the Pakistan side of the LOC. In which sector would these be and uh, is there any such information available? What, what is the nature of the target and uh, who would have been the the troops, the, uh, the commandos deployed in this operation? Uh, the troops uh, deployed would have been uh, the para commandos uh, as a special force. Uh, where the strikes were precisely, which part of the border of the LOC, I am not able to say because I don't have any inside information and even if I had, I wouldn't reveal it. Uh, but uh, whatever is known on the television uh, is what I am telling you about. But somewhere in the Northern Command, because that is where the LOC is. But is there any special point of vulnerability that the Indian Army has uh, checked out and has uh, made an estimate would be the best point uh, for such the, an ingress? Uh, the points of vulnerability are, are not uh, a recess, uh, recent assessment. And these assessments are continuing and uh, points of vulnerability keep shifting. Points at which we can um, uh, have ingress are planned well in advance and uh, these things are known uh, over uh, years, months or years. So uh, at the present moment, which were the points of vulnerability, which were the points where we could uh, get across the LOC without being spotted uh, would have been of recent uh, reconnaissance. So this involved infantry troops, uh, special forces probably. No use of aviation assets or mechanized infantry or any such thing. It's uh, no, uh, unlikely very, in yours. Very unlikely because the, uh, uh, the ingress into Pakistan is just about two or three kilometers, which wouldn't call for any kind of uh, uh, support of helicopters or, uh, or of uh, mechanical, uh, of mechanized uh, infantry. But it involves the use of night vision devices and uh, such. Uh, no, I don't think it requires night vision devices, but uh, it's possible that we had night vision devices, but um, uh, it, it's not necessary. But uh, this is uh, in the nature of a moving target, because just as we continue to update our assessment of where they are uh, locating the launch pads, they too would be moving these uh, around. Uh, to ensure that they don't offer a fixed uh, target for us to act against. Uh, so you think that they have picked uh, strategically valuable targets and uh, have achieved something of uh, tactical and strategic importance probably? I don't know about the strategic, they are not strategic targets. The tactical. They are tactical say, yeah. targets. And uh, they would have been acquired over the period of uh, a few weeks at most. But these wouldn't be in the nature of uh, durable assets. They would not, would not be in the nature, they would be just maybe a tent or a, a shed with a roof on it or uh, not something that cannot be reconstructed uh, uh, at fairly short uh, notice. No, the uh, target was not an infrastructural target. The targets were the uh, people who were in the uh, launching pads. But uh, the point is that uh, there have been uh, kills on the uh, Pakistan side and uh, many would have run away they would have escaped in the darkness. So uh, we have got to have probably photographic evidence or some other kind of evidence to show that actually there was, there was that kind of uh, kills. Yes, just about a week back there were reports that uh, the Indian Army had intercepted uh, some 10 uh, infiltrators and eliminated them. And it later turned out that uh, maybe this was in the nature of a psychological operation that uh, because there was no concrete proof or uh, any photographic or other 
evidence of uh, these uh, uh, targets having been achieved. Uh, so, uh, so this obviously is in a different league and what makes you think so? Just the fact that there's, a, there's been a briefing by DG of military operations uh, puts it in a different league, does it? Or uh, uh, This is the first uh, deliberate strike across the LOC, which was not planned at the local level, it was planned at a higher level. Uh, local level uh, actions across the LOC may have been there, but they are always local level. Uh, the uh, question of uh, photographic or other evidence is something that the Pakistanis will deny. They will say that, uh, well, you, you've cooked up these photographs. And they don't pertain to this particular action. It's always denial is possible. They've been denying all along. But do you think that uh, it, is, uh, it serves a tactical purpose for Indian Army to produce the photographic evidence or is just the say-so of the DG of military operations uh, sufficient? I do not know whether the Army would, um, would publicize those photos in order to show that we know we have made so many kills. Uh, because it's not, it's not a question of numbers. Is the, uh, the question is that we have made a strike, a planned strike offensive action across the border which Pakistan did not expect. They didn't expect this kind of action at all. And um, we have achieved surprise by doing this. But when you say that they didn't expect this, uh, when the signaling has been uh, fairly eloquent, let me say, if I could put it that way, since the Uri incident when 18 of our soldiers were killed, uh, there has been ample signaling both from our political leadership, from our new studios uh, particularly, and from retired army personnel, uh, that uh, this is the uh, uh, tactic that no, we should was, adopt. This was not the only one. There were many options which were being thrown into the uh, uh, ether by the TV channels that, you know, all out war, strike, and um, including this so called uh, surgical strike. There were many options which were talked about, including Indus Water Treaty and so many things. So, uh, Pakistan may not have expected this particular thing, or if they did, they wouldn't know at which point and when. In the context of uh, the uh, longer running uh, trouble that uh, India and Pakistan have had between themselves over Kashmir, uh, how much of a, an impact, how much of a dent does this make in our, uh, in our psychological or tactical advantage over the other side? I don't think there is any uh, serious tactical advantage, but there is a psychological advantage which we have gained, uh, which is that the Pakistan army has always thought that uh, Indian army would never uh, come across the border because we are so much under civilian control. And uh, we never had the political will to do this kind of thing. Now apparently we have got that political will to do it. The last time we saw that kind of political will was uh, probably uh, Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri in 1965 and also in 1971 when Indira Gandhi was the Prime Minister. So uh, between 71 and now there has been uh, no political will. In fact, when uh, the Pakistanis fired across the border uh, into uh, onto Indian positions, uh, they would shout across the border saying, uh, you know, uh, can you retaliate? What can you do? Uh, go and consult your government in Delhi. But a certain degree of autonomy was given to the field commanders. They could retaliate proportionately. I mean, uh, there, there was that uh, unwritten kind of uh, guidance from military headquarters that uh, the colonel or brigadier, whoever is in the field. There, there has been local, re local response, yes. Right. But this goes beyond that. This, this is, goes uh, beyond that. This comes from the top of the political hierarchy. Now, how do you anticipate this uh, evolving? Uh, is there a risk of escalation? Is there, uh, Pakistan obviously uh, has denied it now, but uh, depending upon how India chooses at the level of, uh, the, of, of, uh, of uh, media operations and psychological operations to proceed, uh, they would feel compelled to respond in one way or the other. And how would that be? What is your assessment of that? There's always a risk of escalation. But uh, I think this was a fairly well calculated move uh, because it was unexpected from the Pakistan side. And what would be their preferred uh, uh, or likely mode of responding to this? It's a very difficult question because uh, they've got many options and uh, we do not know what option they would exercise at which point in time. So, um, it's very difficult to say. How important is deniability for Pakistan? Because they, ha they have denied involvement in Pathan court, they have denied involvement in Uri. Uh, they say that this is all part of the 
the larger problem of Jammu and Kashmir and that uh, India has to uh, get uh, smart to uh, the political imprudence of uh, military uh, deployment against this. Uh, the most uh, recent attack at Uri uh, in um, on Sunday 18th, uh, they said that it is not from Pakistan, but it is uh, India which has staged it in order to put the blame on Pakistan. Uh, that is the kind of uh, approach they are taking to it that uh, we would uh, you know shoot our own guys in order to make a case against Pakistan. Now that is pretty far fetched and nobody is buying that kind of argument. They use two typically two kinds of arguments. One that it is a false flag operation by Indian forces to discredit Pakistan. The second that it is a part of the, the completely independent autonomous uh, movement, political uh, freedom struggle as they call it in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, they use two of these, uh, which points to two kinds of uh, uh, tactics that they deploy. One is uh, activating their assets, uh, militant assets within Jammu and Kashmir. The other is to step up the infiltration from across the border. Uh, there are two possible responses. Is there a substantial difference in terms of how uh, India should prepare for either of these? Uh, the attack at Uri where they cut through the fencing and came and used incendiary weapons to burn those tank, uh, those tents uh, is not something which the uh, uh, local Kashmiri uh, um, Azadi demanders uh, could have done because it requires uh, military training. Uh, you can't just uh, do that without training and obviously they have been trained by Pakistan and they could not have been trained by Pakistan within Kashmir. It is obviously on the other side of the LOC that they received training. So, there are launch pads, there are training camps which are known to the whole world and uh, which have been consistently denied by Pakistan. There has been a, a lot of talk especially since the Uri incident about uh, crossing the nuclear threshold and Pakistan has uh, uh, at least claims to have tactical nuclear weapons, battlefield weapons. Uh, now, uh, India has made it clear that uh, it will not use tactical nuclear weapons or seek to develop them because any nuclear use means that the threshold is crossed and which means that all options are on the table after that. So, uh, there is a lot of loose talk about this. People talk as if it is very flippantly about nuclear option, but uh, if there is an existential threat to Pakistan, uh, do you see that uh, there is a threat of escalation beyond that threshold? The Pakistan threat of use of tactical nuclear weapon is clearly that if India crosses the border, then we will use a tactical nuclear weapon on the Indian troops who have crossed the border or the LOC, which means that the tactical nuclear weapon will be used on what is claimed as Pakistani territory. So, that should not be a, uh, uh, a um, uh, should not call for a no first use response from India because it would still be no first use. So, that means that uh, from India's point of view, the threshold is crossed, even if it is on Pakistan territory that the tac tactical weapons are used. It depends on how it is interpreted. What is the signaling from India's side? I mean, uh, because. Uh, because uh, there is obviously a doctrine in place which… Uh, um, I do not know whether there is a national doctrine in place, but uh, the, uh, the point is that uh, I also do not know whether we have tactical nuclear weapons. We do have… The claim is that we do not, uh, the official uh, one, position. One would assume that that is true, in which case uh, the uh, nuclear weapon used by India would be a, um, a strategic nuclear weapon and for that we have said no first use. Finally, what do you think would be the uh, military first and second diplomatic uh, fallout of these in terms of uh, the larger players, the geopolitical players in the scenario? I am pretty sure that China does not want a nuclear conflagration anywhere, leave alone in uh, South Asia. Um, and I do not think any other country wants it, but uh, there could be irresponsible people in Pakistan who would get control of nuclear weapons. That is not the government and not the Pak army. I do not think the Pak army either is interested in this kind of thing. There is nobody who is really interested in uh, nuclear uh, exchange, but ISIS or um, some other fundamentalist group could get control and that would be uh, disastrous. Right. And uh, what would be the reaction of the United States, for instance? They just had a meeting, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and Secretary of State 
John Kerry just uh, a week back in, uh, in New York. And uh, the tone of that meeting, by all accounts, was fairly cordial. And uh, Pakistan is still a valuable strategic partner for the United States. That is the story, that uh, USA is calling for restraint from both sides, from India as well as from Pakistan. That the meeting with the, between Kerry and Nawaz Sharif was cordial is not uh, surprising. It would be cordial. There is no reason for them to uh, not meet him or refuse to discuss. Um, I think it is very much in the interest of USA that there is no uh, nuclear, uh, there is no escalation of conventional warfare or of uh, nuclear uh, warfare in this area. Thank you so much, uh, General Mumbadkari. That's been a very interesting discussion. Let's, Thank you. Uh, let's follow further developments very closely. I'm sure that uh, this will be something to closely track in the next few days. Thank you.